Normally, finding where an elk was born on the landscape would be like finding a needle in a haystack, but technology makes the birth sites easier to find, helping us gain more insight into elk movement and calving habitat. This is Ben, a biologist for the department. In each spring, he looks at GPS collar data from pregnant elk that were collared earlier in the year to identify the moment when their daily movement decreases. Once Ben sees a pattern of localized movement from the elk's collar data, he knows it's likely that the cow will give birth soon. So we're gonna head up, the, up to the upper graze today, up to the Corral Creek area, to look at an elk that actually moved into the graze and has kind of been working her way up towards Tri-Divide Basin. She's kind of localized in an area and looking at her satellite collar data. It looks like she may have had a birth event, so we're gonna run up and check that out. This is where the vaginal implant transmitter, or VIT, comes in. The VIT is a T-shaped device inserted into the cow elk's birth canal early in the year. When the calf is born in the spring, the VIT is expelled and left on the ground at the birth site. If the VIT's out, we'll go recover it and kind of do a, a location workup and see if we can uh, locate a calf and see if the cow's in the area. The VIT transmits a signal, allowing Ben to find it later with an antenna. We were able to locate both the collar and the vit, they have separate signals that we listen for. So you can hear this real faint single beep. The vit was very weak, which makes sense being that the transmitter is still inside the elk. Um, collar had a really strong signal, kind of probably uh, less than five, six hundred yards away from the road where we're at. Um, so fairly confident that the vit's still in and um, that she has not given birth yet. Using the antenna to discover that the VIT was still inside the elk shows how the collar and VIT work together to provide all the data. The radio collar suggests when a birth likely happened, but the VIT confirms the exact birth location. After finding out that the VIT was still inside the elk, we headed with Ben to look for another potential birth site. Each spring, Ben and his colleagues spend weeks studying collar data, locating about 40 VIT devices through transitional elk ranges and recording what they find. Members of the Game and Fish team monitor movement data closely during late May and early June to track elk and get to a birth site as quickly as possible to collect the VIT. If the VIT is still in the elk, then it transmits a signal to the antenna that beeps at 55 beats per minute. The decrease in temperature once the VIT is outside the elk makes the sound speed up to 100 beats per minute. After a short ride in on horseback, we were close enough to hear the faster 100 beat per minute beep from the VIT, meaning the elk had given birth. As Ben neared the birth site, the pulse of the VIT grew louder and clearer. As the beeps grew louder, Ben was relying less on the noise and more on his eyes to find the VIT on the ground. This final part of the search is like searching for an Easter egg in a small yard. Finally, Ben located the VIT noted its exact location, and recorded the habitat features of the birth site. Once Ben gets back to town, he'll send the VIT to the Game and Fish Wildlife Health Lab to run a series of tests. We collect as much data as possible to be proactive and learn about habitat selection. This summer, we're even doing trial studies on a new cow-elk, collar, and VIT device combination that triggers a camera on the collar at birth. It will allow biologists to see video and photos of the first moments after a calf's birth and the weeks following, which will help glean more about elk behavior and calf survival. Our goal with these types of research projects is that we will be able to apply them to elk management on the ground.